Just give them a hand clap of praise and you may be seated. Well, thank you so much for joining us, no matter where you're at, and, and uh, people that are joining in venues and coffee shops and, and watch parties and houses and, and, and Adult and Teen Challenge. We love you guys so much. Would everybody take your copy of God's Word out today and turn to, turn to 2 Corinthians, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, and I believe it's chapter 8, chapter 8. I want to begin kind of a mini series today, and um, I got to be honest with you. Like no, normally, normally I'll have I'll have like several months of sermons planned out, and uh, uh, during this season, it's been it's been week to week. <laughs> it's been week, like I ha- I sat down on mon- on Monday this week, and I had the message. I was all excited about it. I'll I'll preach it later, but I sat down. And I'm like, that's not it. That's not it. God, I need I need this week's. This week's word. And so have you have you found yourself like day by day? Sometimes it's just it's day by day, right? It's step by step. It's one day at a time. It's one day at a time. It's I'm gonna make it today. All right, and then tomorrow I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it today. But I believe that God has a strong word for us as we uh, step into kind of a mini series of what I'm gonna call yes to generosity. Yes to generosity, and I believe that this is gonna be a defining moment. For our church, and I believe this is going to be a defining moment for your family. Second Corinthians, chapter eight. Now, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God, in His kindness, has done through the churches in Macedonia. This is Paul, and he's writing to the churches not in Macedonia; he's writing to the churches in Corinth. But he's bragging on the churches of Macedonia. Do you know, do you know that there are there are churches and there are individuals? I love that that Paul sometimes, you know, bragging, bragging if it's from the wrong heart is is not, you know, we don't want pride. We don't want, we want to brag just to brag, but but God here pointed out the churches of Macedonia. Can, can I use the, and, and it is the churches, so the churches of Macedonia, Macedonia was kind of like this apostolic covering over Thessalonica, uh, Berea, and Philippi. Those were the three churches under this Macedonian family of churches. Sound a little familiar, this small, small supply family of churches, but Paul, Paul points it out, and there was something about this group of churches that was made up of individuals that caused heaven to take notice. Can I just say that I want to live a life and I want to be a part of a church that causes heaven to take notice. I want to do things and I want to live in such a way. I want to give in such a way. I want to step into what God has for us in such a way that God, if he was still writing, writing the Bible today, would say, hey, did, did, you, did you hear about Multiply? Maybe he's, maybe he's talking to a church in Kansas and he's saying, hey, did you guys hear about what's going on in the Multiply family of churches? So I want to lean into this, like what is it that these churches in Macedonia, what did they do that caused heaven to sit up and to take notice and say there's something going on down there, there's something about this church, there's something about these group of crazy people in Concord, there's something about this this multiply family, like God's, God's at work. I want to be a part of a church where word starts to spread and word gets around, hey, did you hear what's going on at Multiply Church? That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. And it says in verse 2, I don't like this verse. I don't like it at all. I like the second part. I don't like the first part. It says, they are being tested by many troubles, say 2020. (laughs) Tested by many troubles and and they're very poor. But they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. Y'all talk about things that don't go together. Things that shouldn't be connected. Why do you, how does this church have abundant joy when they're experiencing many troubles? 
How are they responding in overwhelming generosity when they're extremely poor? Extreme poverty, overwhelming generosity, many trials, abundant joy. I, I, I've, just, I've been wrestling with this all week because these are things that in the natural ought not go together. 2020, we don't have a lot of natural reasons to experience abundant joy. We don't have a lot of natural reasons to respond in an overwhelming generosity. And yet I believe these churches in Macedonia, it was kind of a line in the sand moment for them. You know, you can only be beat down so much before you got to make a decision of either I'm done, I'm going to give up, I'm going to throw in the towel, this God stuff is not for me, this Jesus stuff is too hard. Or you say, I'm done with this and I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight and I'm telling you 2020 has felt like the beat down year the beat down economically beat down politically beat down virus beat down just all of these things all of these things and I just wonder if this is our I wonder if this is our brave heart moment I wonder if this is a moment I don't know if anybody's carrying around any blue paint in your purse or your pocketbook but if you are if you could just take some of that and just maybe smear it across like you can throw it up to me like I want I want a brave heart moment of are you gonna run are you gonna stand and fight and I just want to say I'm gonna fight I'm gonna fight I feel like I don't have anything else to lose like what if I'm we're gonna go down we're gonna go down swinging at this thing and I just wanted to declare to the enemy today that we're going to stand and fight we are going to stand and fight three of you are with me you're gonna stand and fight come on where's my fighters at I want to make a I want to make a declaration I want to make a declaration of generosity. Uh, when you walked in today, and, and it's on those of you that are joining us on, online, all of this is on the front page of our, our website. Some of you can't join, uh, uh, do this until after the service, but after the, the service, or if you have another device, just grab it and go to multiply.church, and, and it's on the front page of the website. But I, I, I think for, for me, for Camden and I, for the Witherup household, this multiple, this miracle offering, you're like, Pastor, uh, how to kill a church 101. Number one, last week, Pastor, if you'll talk about politics in the middle of the most uh, uh, emotionally charged political season, talk about politics. And then after that, talk about giving, Pastor. Like, that's how to kill a church 101. <laughs> in, the in the natural. In the natural. You know what this represents for, for me? This is my sword. Pastor, don't you know, don't you know that this is 2020? Don't you know that people are in crisis? Don't you know that, that people are losing jobs? Don't you know that people's uh, 401ks are, are shrinking? Don't you know? Yeah, I know, and I just feel like, like now's the time. Like now, now's the time that this is the, this is the time. What better time to be like a church in Macedonia and say, this is the time during, I, I, hopefully, hopefully we're not going to have this opportunity again. I pray that way. Can you pray with me? Lord, let us never have this moment of extreme trial again. But I want this to be a defining moment in my life. I want this to be a defining moment with my kids. And I want this to be a defining moment. This is my declaration. Would you join me in making this declaration? By sowing this, I want to preach a message called sowing a seed out of need. A seed out of need. Sometimes the seed that you sow in overflow is a great seed. But sometimes one of the greatest times that you can sow a seed is a seed out of need. What is the, the old proverb, the best, the best time to plant a tree was either 50 years ago or right now. And so some of the trees we didn't plant 50 years ago, let's, let's take advantage of this moment and let's plant it right now. By sowing this seed out of need, I want, I want the world to hear this declaration from Multiply Church, that we declare today that our trial will give birth to abundant joy. In verse 2, they are being tested by many troubles, but they are also filled with abundant joy 
devil, we declare to you that our joy is not determined by what we see on the news. Our joy is not determined by our surroundings. My joy comes from a deeper source. It's hidden like that iceberg. I'm going to access my joy at a deeper source in the name of Jesus. God, release joy on your people. Release joy on your people. Y'all, sometimes you gotta laugh. Like you just you just got to, right? You just like you got you got you'll go insane. You'll go insane. We gotta we gotta laugh. We've gotta we've gotta access that joy. How many of you have ever been on a, a missions trip to a to a third world country? Wave at me. Put a throw a throw a wavy hand in the chat. Drop a drop a, 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 a emoji in the chat if you've been on a, a missions trip. Because as Americans, this verse doesn't make sense. But if you've ever been overseas, you're like, I've seen this verse. I've seen this verse. If you have ever watched kids in Africa or kids in South America or Central America with a pair of shorts and may, maybe a, a, a tattered T-shirt and bare feet running on those, running on those dusty streets, playing soccer with, with, it's not even a soccer ball, it's like some, some rags that are, that are held together with some string or some tape and some makeshift goals. If you've ever seen, see, see nobody told those kids they didn't have anything. And, and you're looking at those kids, right, and their, their eyes, their eyes are just alive with life and the, they smile and they light up and, and nobody told them, nobody, nobody told those kids that their joy should be attached to their situation in life, and they found a way to access joy at a higher level. So we declare that our trial is giving birth to an abundance of joy, number two. This declaration that I will live a life of outrageous generosity. It goes on to say, they're very poor, which is overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they only, that they not only gave what they could afford, but far more, and they did it of their own free will. You know, it's never all give when. It's never all give when. I'll give when I have a more stable job. I'll give when I get the raise. I'll give when I get the promotion. That we are declaring by this, by this lifestyle, by this generous offering that we will live that lifestyle. We'll live that lifestyle. Number three, I love this one. Number three is I'm begging not to be left out. I'm begging not to be left out. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift of the believers in, in Jerusalem. Pastor Steve, I want to I wanna take that offering one time. Like when I finish the offering and somebody comes running in from the back, hey, run that again. Frank, run that again. Would you take that? I missed that offering. Would you take that offering again? Like, like that would be a great, a, a great moment in a church service. I'm begging you, pa Pastor, I'm begging you, take another offering. Okay, we can do that. Like, I'm, be I'm begging you, take, take another, I'm begging not to be left out. Let me, let me catch up, let me catch up to speed. I need to catch everybody up to speed. Some of you are new since we, we released this. And, and so this is our Kingdom Builders booklet. Every year we give our tithe and offering, the, the dime out of every dollar, right? The, the, the dollar out of every 10, our tithe is returned to the Lord. I'll teach on that in a, in a couple weeks. It is the only way for you to be uh, blessed financially in God's kingdom. And I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through that and I'll teach through that. But then above our tithe, we sow seed into kingdom builders. Kingdom builders covers three areas. None of this money, none of this money comes to multiply church at all. We give it away almost as quickly as we get it. And so we give to global missions, we give to local church expansion, and we give to future Christian leaders. And so then every November, what we do, so we make our, our kind of our yearly pledges and we give monthly towards kingdom builders and we're just sowing seed. We're sowing seed into all of these amazing ministries. I encourage you, uh, uh, I've, been, I've been using this in my devo devotions these past couple weeks and I've been reading through these and praying for these ministries. And, and I wanna encourage you if, you, need, if you need some encouragement, how many of you could use a 
little bit of good news, just a little bit of encouragement. Man, read through this book. It will put a smile on your face of like the, the gospel's going forward and ministry is taking place. And then what we do every November is we come before the Lord and we add our faith to a miracle offering. This is a one-time offering that goes toward kingdom builders. And this is your seed and this is, and this is your soil. Does that make sense? This is, this is your seed and this is your soil. So I'm taking my seed and I'm giving on November 15th or, or whatever that Sunday is. Uh, not next Sunday, but the sun. No, next Sunday. Next Sunday. Whatever. What's today? What's the? Text what? Text. <laughs> Today's the 8th, 15th, right? Okay. Uh, I'm on track there. So next Sunday, next Sunday, we're all going to come together and we are going to make this declaration. We're going to sow our miracle offering into this soil. And I need, to, I need to tell you just some of what you're a part of. So did you know this is, this is so cool? Oh, I can't wait to tell you some good news. This past Thursday, you guys planted 50 churches. Do you know that? You're like, yeah, that makes sense. I was, I was kind of tired on Thursday. Now it, now it makes sense. Like not, this is not hyperbole. Literally on Thursday, you planted 50 churches in India. So, so let, me, let me back up and let me explain. How many of you have like that one website or that one store that it's kind of dangerous for you to walk into that store? You know you're going to drop, you know, you know. Guys, it's called Lowe's. You walked in there. All you needed was one little fastener for $2.99, and you just walk out shaking your head. I spent $238. I don't, know what, I don't know what happened. Ladies, do you have that one shoe store, that one clothing store? For some of you over the past nine months, your, your Amazon Prime, it's just boom, 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 boom. You're like rapid fire. You're just rapid fire. on Like it's dangerous. You have those, like it's dangerous for you to be. So, so for me... For me, one of my, one of my danger uh, things, and the staff teases me about it, is when I go to missions meetings. Because if I go to missions meetings, I'm spending your money. I just, I just am. I just am. Like, I will get, like, I'm like, are you kidding me? We get to do, yeah, yeah, sign, sign us up. So what, what we have done is we've created um, a Wind of the Spirit account. That sounds really nice, right? You know what a wind of the spirit account is? Is Pastor Doug went to the missions meeting and he got all pumped for Jesus and he just started giving away your money. That's what that, that's what that means. But this is, listen, this is so cool. So, so Pastor Rob Ketterling, uh, a pastor in Minneapolis, Minnesota, he got up there and he was talking about in India right now. So this is a, this is like the last graduating class from Global University in India. There was 1,000, over 1,300 students that graduated from Global University. And you know what they're all doing? They are all planting churches. They're planting churches. And it only takes, they're planting house churches. They're planting house churches. And it only takes $100, $100 to plant a house church in India. So I was like, let's plant 50 churches. And so I took wind of the spirit and, and I'm just like, $5,000. And we got to do that. And I didn't have to come back to you and ask for more money because you have already invested it through Kingdom Builders Come on, somebody, celebrate that the gospel is going forward. This is, a, this is a picture of one of those house churches that are being planted in India. And I think there's, a, there's another picture of another house church that's being planted. And then, and, and then there, the next picture, Pastor Rob was over there. And they started, so in these house churches, he was speaking to one of the house churches. And, and they started praying for people. They started praying for people. Well, word spread to the neighbor's house that, hey, there's some people that are praying for people. And so they took, they took their autistic daughter. And um, because word had spread, Pastor Rob's son had been healed of, of autism. And so this unbelieving neighbor came and said, would you pray for my daughter? who has autism, and the word of God is spreading in India, and we're getting to plant all of these churches, but we're, we're not only getting to just plant churches overseas, like, we're planting a church in Harrisburg. We're planting a church. Pastor West, come on up. Y'all give it up for, for Pastor West. So, so I want to I wanna walk through some numbers. Some of, some of you guys are, are, are numbers people. So Pastor Wes, um, as you guys are getting ready to, to plant in Harrisburg, plant multiply in Harrisburg, our charge to you was to raise how much money? Uh, 25000 
25,000, and you had to raise that outside of Multiply Church, right? It had to be new money because we just didn't want to reappropriate the money. And then our promise to you was if you raise 25, we'll match it four to one. That's not a bad match. How many of you take that at your job and your 401k? Come on. That's not a bad match. And so, Pastor Wes, um, outside funds, outside funds from Multiply Church, you guys have raised about how much? Uh, next week we'll be at 24500 24500 Come on. In the middle of a pandemic, from outside sources, they've raised $24,500. And so we will match that with another 100000 because that other five hundred and more probably is going to come in. By the way, your limit is a hundred thousand. I didn't. I didn't. Let's just put a cat. Let's put a cap on that right now. But watch this, Pastor West. I started doing the numbers. So we got some. We got some numbers, people out there. Some. Of, some of you are like, no. Tell me more stories about India. And some of you are like, well, what's the math? Let me tell you the math. So watch this. Watch this. So if we plant multiply Harrisburg with let's just say hundred and fifty people. You go, you're going to grow to 300 like that. So let's say in the, next, in the next year or so, you go to 300. So your income when you grow to 300 will be approximately $360,000 if statistics across church giving world hold true, $360,000. And so what do we do? What do we do at Multiply Church with every, with every dollar that comes in? Remember, we tithe off of our tithe, Right? So $36,000 of that one year, just that one year, is going to go to support our missionaries. And then we ask every location to raise about one-third of their income additional in Kingdom Builders funds. And so you're going to be given $36,000 to missions and raising another $100,000 for Kingdom Builders. So just in one year. Just in one year, you're going to return to the kingdom $136,000 out of the $125,000. Say, that's good math. Come on, turn to somebody and say, that's good math. Now, watch this. Watch this. If they don't grow at all, which they will, they may be bigger than Concord in like five years. Not because we're not going to grow. We are. They're just going to like go gangbusters. And, and here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. If they don't grow at all in 10 years, they will have given $1.36 million in missions money over and above the tithe and offering to spread the gospel around the world. How many of you in your investment portfolio would invest $100,000 and get that kind of return all day over 10 years? Say yes. But watch, watch this, watch this. It's not just about the dollars, and all of those dollars will go to reach souls. But watch this when it comes to local souls. So in an established, Pastor, why are you planting, why are you planting churches? We have so much in Concord. Here's one of the reasons why. Because in established churches, it takes 4.1 people for every new convert. In new churches, it takes 2.1 people to reach a new convert. We've not only multiplied the dollars we're giving into missions, but we've just doubled our efficiency in reaching the loss. And that's what Wesley and Crystal and their team, that's what we're investing money in. Come on, one more time. Y'all give it up for Pastor Wes. A seed out of need, a seed out of need, sowing into places like India, sowing into places like Harrisburg, and sewing into places, as you watch this, of our Cabarrus Dream Center. The story of the Dream Center began 26 years ago in the hearts of uh, Matthew and Tommy Barnett, the pastors out, um, out west. And um, really, it began with them going to um, Los Angeles, and they took a step in the city and began to look around and they saw homeless people. They saw um, veterans without health care, veterans without housing, um, and people who were ridden and really ruined by um, drug addiction. Um, and in a moment, God dropped a burden on them. And in LA, uh, where they began this first Dream Center, um, it was actually in an abandoned hospital. 
um, and they began to divide the wings into different things and the first one was um, for drug addiction and recovery and another one ended up being for human trafficking and another one ended up being for housing and began to develop this thing to serve the community and meet the needs. Pastor Tommy began to travel around and share the vision of the Dream Center to raise more money to continue to develop it and meet the needs of people in their community. And when Pastor Tommy came to Concord, Pastor Tom Whidden, our founding pastor at Multiply Church, actually caught the vision and caught the burden from God. He began to notice around the places that he was ministering here in Concord and Cabarrus County, the same things. Those same people struggling on the streets with homelessness, the same drug-ridden households, the same single mothers who were almost gonna be homeless with kids on the side of the street. And he knew that there was a need for a Dream Center here in Cabarrus County to meet the needs of the people while also telling them the hope that's found in Jesus. But the reality was, is that the dream was there, but it never came to fruition. And it was never that the vision was gone or that the dream had left. It just needed to be rebirthed. Fast forward a lot later, Dr. Doug Withrop steps in to the lead pastor role here at Multiply Church. And about a year after that, um, Pastor Doug approaches Pastor Gwen Stowers to establish what we considered could possibly fulfill this dream of a dream center here in our community. It was around that same time, through my community relationships, I began to hear about the Cabarrus Hub Initiative. And basically, the Cabarrus Hub Initiative was where the county was trying to find a location for much needed resources to come together under one roof. It seemed like the right fit to offer this space that we had available to the Cabarrus Hub under the covering, if you will, of the Cabarrus Dream Center. Many agencies in the community came together and said, yes, we would love to be there. Cabarrus Health Alliance Dental Services was already at the Dream Center. They brought in their WIC services. The Department of Human Services um, brought in a couple of case managers. Cooperative Christian Ministry um, wanted to bring some of their resources into the Dream Center. Present Age Ministries, which is advocacy for human trafficking survivors. They were very interested in bringing some resources to the Dream Center. Of course, we already had Cornerfield Market here at the Cabarrus Stream Center, and um, we began to also dream for some mental and behavioral health resources at the Dream Center, and then possibly some child care for the clients who come into the Dream Center. Uh, can you imagine what it would be like to be able to put your child in a safe environment while you're seeking much needed resources to keep your family healthy? The community has been just incredible with the support of the Cabrera Stream Center. And through the COVID um, season, Cornerfield Market never stopped giving out resources in the community. Here at a local company, SND Coffee, uh, there was a huge layoff about halfway through um, the COVID crisis. And there was a family that came through with two or three kids. And um, it was a mother who had just been laid off from SND and um, she was crying in the line and her kids were in their car seats in the back seat, really just confused at what was going on. Um, and and I, I was checking them in in a moment when the lady turned to me and just looked at me in the, in the dearest fashion and said, really, thank you. There's no way my kids would have food this month if it weren't for you providing the needs for us. And it was in a moment like that that I got to say that it's not just us but it's the love, it's the hope that's found in Jesus that meets your needs in every moment. These are families and kids and mothers and fathers that are being affected with the love of Jesus through the Cabarrus Stream Center all the time. When I think about what we've already done just through the past seven months in our community with the, the Dream Center just being partially open, I can only imagine what God has in store for us when we see the birth of it come to completion. What is God going to do in our community? Would you take your envelope in your hand? Here's what we say when it comes to the miracle offering. I'm, I'm not asking you for money. I'm really not. 
all I'm asking for you is to ask God. Would you just ask God this week, would you spend a little bit of time in prayer with your kids, with your family, saying what could we, what could we as a declaration of some troubled times, some hard, hard economic times, but we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna make some declarations. We're gonna swing that sword. Here's the final declaration that we're gonna make the next Sunday, and we'll do it digitally as well, but at our location as we come in a nice socially distanced way and put our gift at the altar before the Lord, we're gonna declare, we're gonna declare that I'm a child of the King I'm a child of the king, and my kingdom is not of this world. Verse 5, they did even more than we had hoped for. For their first action, their first action, their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to. Our online our online location pastors, Pastor, Pastor Nate and Lee. And by the way, everybody watching online, y'all just throw some love. Say thank you, Pastor Nate. We love you, Pastor Nate. He's, he and his, his amazing team of world changers behind the scenes. And how I many of you have been a benefit of that online? Thankful for all of that online services over the past nine months. He's, he's doing such a great job. They moved to Concord about a year ago. And... During that time, they've been in a been in a rental house, and they just they just purchased they just closed on on a new house. And here's what I here's here's what I was thinking. Here's what I was thinking. How 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 foolish would it have been if Nate was like running to Lowe's every day? If they so they already closed on the new house and they only have three weeks in the rental house. How foolish would it have been for Nate to run to Lowe's every day and be coming back to the rental house with new hardwood floors and being like, man, I'm just, I'm up all night and I'm pouring all this money and, and we're installing new new uh, hardwood floors in there. And then, and then he runs to, to Lowe's again and he comes back and he's like, new kitchen, ca- new kitchen cabinets in the rental house. And how many of you know at some point, at some point, Lee's going to be like, hey, Hey Nate, hey Nate, we're just we're just renting. We're just renting. Hey Nate, hey Nate, we're just renting. Hey Nate, we're just renting. We're not gonna be here long. We're not gonna be here long. Why are you pouring all your resources into where you're just renting? Nate, why are you pointing? Why aren't we why aren't we giving? See, I wanna give where I'm going. I want to give where I'm going. I want to get, are you catching this? I want to give where I'm going. See, I don't want to pour all of my resources, all my emotional and mental and physical resources into this world because this world is not my home. It's not where I'm going. I want to give where I'm going. I want to give where I'm going. I want to begin to invest some seed into the future and into souls and into lives. I want to give where I'm going and I want to do it in the middle of a pandemic when it doesn't make sense to stubbornly dig my heels in and say devil you are not going to win this round in the name of Jesus I'm swinging for the fences father I declare over this people that we are a generous people that we will not let circumstances and situations dictate our joy our giving or anything else in our life but God I pray that as we bring these envelopes to you this week and just say what kind of seed can I sow out of my need I pray that it would be used in an amazing way to reach multiplied people for the kingdom of God if you believe that can you say a good amen amen Amen. It's so good to be together, worshiping together today. Thank you guys for joining us and being here. Listen. I am so glad that you chose to join us today, especially if you decided to follow Jesus. We would love to celebrate with you. If you would text ALIVE, 94,000, we would love to send you some resources to help you along as you begin your journey. Thank you so much. We'll see you again soon.